There is a Canon A1 accessory, which I need to find. Sorry, just want to make sure that we're all stable. Oh my god, we're not. Oh my god. It feels like it's going to fall over, though. But you're going to fall over. It doesn't, it doesn't. So I just want to get it stable so that it won't fall over. You keep referring to you as it. My apologies. We had two Canon A1 cameras. I don't know why I bought two. In fact, I know there's a reason why I bought two now. One is really good, and the other one is good. This one which is a really good one and uh, send that one up good one I will keep and repair because there's one thing that's broken on it ha! I've got three parts for two <laughs> I went nuts I bought three of the same thing this one here this is the Canon motor drive MA on the bottom <clears throat> there's this switch which is a release for the battery compartment in here. So you have to push that switch in the direction, the catch in the direction indicated, and then you can open up. Oh, it's a bit stiff. You put your fingernails in there and then open up the battery compartment. And that battery compartment takes eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Sorry to do this to you. 12 AA batteries. It only goes in one way, by the way. So there's, again, that catch down the bottom. You can see the movement there, and it clicks into that hole there, I think. So that looks like um, connected in and unconnected. So there's that little triangular bit here, which it catches into. So to make it all click in, you have to, um, it's kind of a snap lock system. So there's a little metal groove there that fits into that component down the bottom there. You line it all up. You uh, squeeze it in. Down the bottom, clicks in there. You squeeze that bit in there. You push this button at the top here to release the lock. It slides down and locks in place. Ta -da! You can undo the battery compartment without having to undo all of these connections. And then we're good to go. But first, let me show you here the Canon A1, my favorite 35 mil film camera. Oh, so good, so good, so good, so good. There's a way to check the battery. So you need to take it, so manual, I love it. There's this flippy switch here, which will then let you move it from uh, L, which is lock, which is in red, to A to automatic. And then on this side here, there's a little button you press down. When you press it down, the LED will flash a number of times like that, indicating the battery is good. When it stays solid or doesn't flash at all, the battery needs to be replaced. You've got to maintain film cameras so much more than digital. Far out. Everything's expensive, takes time, is longer, and is more involved. We may have to do this, this side. Let's do it like that. This is gonna be like a 300 take video. So here we have our Canon A1. Here we have our Canon A1 motor drive accessory. Yes, this is the item. Now this is really cool, I must tell you. To separate these two, you must separate the two so you can attach this base unit to the camera and then attach the battery compartment. So what we can do here is there's a button here. I don't know if you can see that button. You depress that button. At the same time, slide that lock towards the button it should catch and reveal this little red dot. And then you can see there's a gap and then you just use a bit of force and pry it apart because it catches on that little tiny uh, metal needle thing here. Right, pulls apart. That is the bit that holds the battery, but there's also a shutter release button here. You can lock it out by moving this slider from the white dot to the red dot. The red dot generally means off and the white dot generally means on, all right? So then there's various bits and pieces on the Canon which have the same kind of thing. So there's a white dot that gets revealed here when you slide that switch over and then it disappears and makes no, no red or it's just black. So white generally means on or active and then hiding the white means it's off. Likewise, there's this sliding switch down here which covers the selector for shutter speeds. So you can cover it so you won't accidentally change the um, the shutter speed. Uh, likewise, there's this white dot which indicates what what priority you're giving. Is it to the um, shutter time, to 
value or aperture a value so the white things ugh, generally tell you where things are active and not likewise the red l i don't know if you can see it in there but in there there's a red l that red l means that it's locked and then moving it off the red l onto either a for automatic is activating automatic or moving it to the right puts it on the two for two second timer 10 for 10 second timer for self timing so put it on uh, l for lock for the time being what else is there that indicator there is still universally used for indicating the sensor or the film plane so the film in this is right up the back of the camera right there and that means that's the distance from the film plane to the back lens of the lens that you're putting onto the camera which is known as the focal length for the lens all right back to this so we've taken that apart we've got uh three units there to attach this to the bottom of the camera is is the first thing you need to do and there's this little catch at the bottom here which lets you uh twist and turn and and then uh, screw it in the bottom of the camera it's pretty self-evident but i just want to i want to go overboard a little bit in terms of uh, making sure that uh, there's nothing left undone or unsaid. Now there's a uh, holder here for this screw down the bottom here, which you need to undo and reveal because there's a motor drive. That's what the motor drive is driving. It, push, it pushes this little metal bit, capstan if you like, into the base of the camera over here. And that's what does the film winding for you automatically. So to take that out, probably need a five cent piece screwdriver. I'm gonna use an actual screwdriver. You don't have to, you can use a five cent piece, or whatever you wanna use. So that just unscrews, <laughs> don't lose it, whatever you do. So it's just this tiny little aluminium cap. Yeah. Why is there shade there like that? That's terrible. Uh, it's tiny little, like a five cent piece cap. I'll do it out there. So that's what we're gonna be sliding into the holder so you don't lose it. Canon back in 1978 thought of all these things. So that slides in there, hopefully you can see it. Uh, it's a little bit tight, gotta be honest, skin, but push it in you will. God damn it. Okay, so it does slide in, but a bit of force. So you won't lose it. Then those, four pins line up with those four pieces of metal all you do is line it up oh i forgot this if you've got this hand grip that's got to come off and yes i'm sending this hand grip up separately believe it or not it adds a lot to the um to the camera all right we uh screw that in Base. It doesn't have to be super tight, but it's got to be tighter than what I've got up there currently. Just finger tight. Yep, slide that there. And then we grab our battery holder and reverse of what we did. We snap it together in the end here till it clicks. Flip the camera over, lift that up, push that button to make that thing go lock. Goes down there, and that's it. We're done. So now you don't need to put that back on that grip because the the battery uh, automatic motor drive whatever you call it is um it's got its own little hand grip which is really nice to hold now so it turns it into this chunky tank of a camera now that's all you need to do um basically you put this uh in the mode that you want it to operate in manual automatic uh, aperture mode pr uh, priority or shutter mode priority and you can push your uh, shutter release button down here. And that will do, I think in the order of, I think it's four frames per second. It's not super fast, but at the time there was no equivalent. There was no, um, in 1978, there were no motor drive cameras. This is one of the first ones that, um, that was released by Canon. Yeah, so it's a good bit of history, I must say. A really good bit of history that's in your hands right now. And that's all you gotta do to make it work. It's a beast now. And the other part to tell you about, 
you can uh, use this shadow release button here. You can use this shadow release button here. And then if you want to do like a portrait mode, there's another sh uh, shadow release button on the edge here. And I think there's one more. Yeah, there's also another one, a white one down here. So various ways. And again, you can lock out these shadow releases individually as well. There's little buttons in here to lock out the function. So it locks it. Same with this side on the red, it locks it so it won't work. And up here, it puts it on to uh, an L function for lock as well. So then you can only use that one. And then you can unlock obviously the ones you want to use or leave them all unlocked and you know, play a bit of Russian roulette, so to speak. Uh, I just love the way it looks. Oh, I don't want a beast. Um, enjoy as much as I do. So much fun. <laughs> oh, and any questions, just uh, comment uh, and have fun. Look at it. Oh my God, look at it. Yeah, it's just brilliant. Just brilliant. So you could do the old portrait thing and. Oh, piece of history in your hands. Oh, brings a tear to the eye. Okay, catch you in the next one. Bye. Just as a postscript, I noticed that there's a couple of buttons here. So I need to run through another video tutorial to show you what this R button is for. It's basically for rewinding. So you can use the automatic uh, motor drive to rewind the film when you activate that switch. It's got a push button. So you, you push the button in on the left and then lift it up. And that will then kick off the rewind function there. There's also a, a little receptacle here with a cover in it. This, I think this is for an external uh, power source. So don't quote me on that just yet. I'll do a bit of research and then find out. It's covered at the moment with a plastic plug, either to get power out or put power in. I'm not sure, but I'll do a bit of research on that. Uh, as I mentioned, the shadow release buttons, one, two, uh, three. So you've got the fourth one on the camera itself, but there's three additional. What else is there? That's all that I needed to tell you. There is, uh, there's, sorry, this one here. There's uh, turning the, the motor drive off down the bottom, putting it into sort of cannon. Love it, 978. Sorry, you've got to lift this up. The whole thing has got a spring. You lift the, um, it's spring loaded. So grab it from both sides with your finger and thumb, lift it up back towards you and then you can twist it. S for single, off for no functionality, not applicable, off. L for low speed, H for high speed. I think that does eight frames per second when you put on high speed. I'll check on the specs as well, but um, yeah, pretty uh, nifty way to control the speed. It's super cool fun when you hear it going. Oh my God, it sounds so good. Zzzk, 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 zzzk. It just sounds awesome. Um, there's the end of my postscript. Now I'll say goodbye. I'll talk to you later. See you in the next one. Bye. Where's the off switch? Where's the pause switch? Oh my God. <laughs>